Hello everybody! Watch this video to find out how to recover data from a RAID system based on a non-operable iOmega NAS device model iX4200D, how to change RAID level, add a shard folder, configure network connection to the storage, and connect an ISCSI disk. iOmega, a company that currently belongs to Lenovo EMC, manufactures a popular series of NAS devices designed for storing large amounts of information. A network attached storage, or NAS for short, is a data storage server connected to a network that allows its users to access the information stored in such server. Quite often, storing data in such devices is based on the RAID technology. A RAID-type network attached storage is a reliable solution to keep your files safe, but there are also factors that influence data integrity regardless of how you store it. As any other device, NAS systems by iOmega or Lenovo uh, have a certain operating life. It means that after a few years in active use, all storage devices tend to fail sooner or later. Generally, most NAS systems remain usable for 3 to 5 years on average. When NS finally breaks down, its user lose access to the data written to the disk array inside the storage system. A network attached storage may break down after a power failure, voltage surges, overheating, accidental formatting, reinstalling an operating system, damage in the file system – usually it affects the journal or the superblock – and as a result of the mechanical issues with the hard disk or the RAID controller. Very often, data can be lost from NAS devices when users decide to update the firmware. And to get your files back, you'll need a specialized data recovery tool. The manufacturer offers a dedicated piece of software named Lenovo EMC to help you restore operability of the hard disks. Yet the problem is that the main function of this tool is to format those disks. When you do that, you just lose all the information they contain and it's going to be difficult to restore it. In today's video, I'll show you the utility to use with a NAS device which no longer works properly and extract the information from its disks. This NAS model builds a RAID automatically during initial configuration. To change RAID settings, open the NAS Management Utility, go to the Storage tab, Drive Management, and then open Settings. Choose the RAID level you need and configure other settings, then click Apply. The rebuild process begins, and it takes quite a long time to complete. While the array is being rebuilt, let's move on to configure the storage and add a shared folder and enable network protocols. To add a new folder, open the Storage tab, Shares, Add a share. Type a name for the folder and click Create. To configure permissions, expand the tab Access Permissions. Set permissions for everyone. or add a specific user by clicking on the plus button, add access permissions, and click apply. Now, we need to enable network protocols to provide access to the network drive. Jump to the network tab, protocols, Enable the protocols you need by dragging the sliders to corresponding positions. For additional settings, click on the gear wheel icon next to the protocol. To configure an ISCSI connection, jump to the Storage tab, ISCSI, enable it and then hit the button Add an ICSI drive. Type a name, set the size, and then click Create. For more options, open Settings. In the first tab below, you can configure drive access permissions.
Now, the final step is to connect it to on a computer. Run ISCSI initiator, type the IP address of the server into the target field, and click Quick Connect. The final step is to initialize and format it in disk management. And then it will appear in Windows Explorer. You are welcome to learn more from the video. Check the link below. If the network attached storage breaks down, you can try to use Linux features. For most NAS servers, Linux is their natural environment as they are formatted in Linux file systems. However, if you know little about this operating system, we don't recommend trying this method. A single mistake in commands may erase all information on the hard disks. The best solution would be to use a specialized tool for recovering data from network attached storage systems. As most NAS devices are running on Linux-based operating systems and their hard disks are formatted for EXT, XFS, and BetterFS file systems, while RAID arrays are typically built with the use of MDADM or LVM technology, it becomes impossible to read their contents when such disk arrays are connected to a Windows computer directly. To read the disks and retrieve any information from there, use the tried and well-tested data recovery tool for NAS solutions – Hetman RAID Recovery. This program supports most popular file systems, technologies, and RAID types, and in most cases it will be able to rebuild the damaged RAID automatically. Before you start, make sure you have enough data and power cables to connect all your hard disks. It's better to use a bunch of SATA cables to connect the disk directly to the motherboard of your computer. But if you have only a few free SATA ports, you can use USB to SATA adapters when necessary. Also, you will need an additional storage device to copy the retrieved data to. It can be an external hard drive, another network attached storage, or some other device with sufficient capacity. Take the disks out of the NAS device and connect them to a Windows computer. When the operating system has booted, open Disk Management and check if the added disks are recognized. Windows may suggest to initialize or format the drives to be able to access them. Remember to never agree to either operation, because they can erase the remaining information completely. Download and install the data recovery tool. Hetman RAID Recovery will identify the disks automatically, read their service information and rebuild the damaged RAID system. Now, the program has identified the RAID volume and shows it at the top of the Drive Manager window. One big volume is shown here and all of its partitions below. As this device is based on Linux LVM technology, the disk array is displayed in the separate field with the title RAID Volumes. This volume is based on XFS file system. To access the volume contents, you need to scan it first. Right-click on it and choose Open. Choose the scan type to run and click Next to start searching for lost files. Wait for the process to be over and then switch to Search results by clicking Finish. As you can see, the program has found all the files that have been written to the disk. Select the files you want to recover and click Recovery. Choose the disk where to save them and specify the directory. Then click Recovery and Finish. After that, go to the folder you have chosen and check if the files are there. Hetman RAID Recovery offers extra features to improve effectiveness of working with RAID disks that have hardware issues. It lets you create disk images and then analyze these images instead of the actual hard disks in order to reduce disk usage and prevent them from breaking down at the most inappropriate moment. And that is all for now. 
Hopefully this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Push the bell button to receive notifications and never miss new videos. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck.